The 90mm gun M1-M2-M3 was an American heavy anti-aircraft and anti-tank gun, playing a role similar to the German 8.8cm Flak 18. It had a 3.5-in, 90mm, diameter bore, and a 15 feet, 4.6m, barrel, giving it a 50 caliber length. It was capable of firing a 3.5 in times 23.6 in, 90 mm times 600 mm, shell 54,474 feet, 16,604 m, horizontally, or a maximum altitude of 39,500 feet, 12,000 m. The 90mm gun was the US primary heavy anti-aircraft gun from just prior to the opening of World War II into the 1950s, complemented by small numbers of the much larger 120mm M1 gun. Both began to be phased out in the early 1950s as their role was taken over by surface-to-air missiles like the MIM-3 Nike Ajax. As a tank gun, it was the main weapon of the M36 tank destroyer and M26 Pershing tank as well as a number of post-war tanks. It was also briefly deployed 1943-1946, as a coast defense weapon with the United States Army Coast Artillery Corps. History Prior to World War II, the primary U.S. anti-aircraft gun was the 3-inch M1918 gun, 76.2 mm L-40, a widely used caliber for this class of weapon. Similar weapons were in British, Soviet, and other arsenals. There had been several upgrades to the weapon over its history, including the experimental T8 and T9 versions developed in the early 1930s, that were intended to enter service later in the decade. However the US Army became interested in a much more capable weapon instead, and on June 9, 1938, it issued a development contract calling for two new guns, one of 90 mm which it felt was the largest possible size that was still capable of being manually loaded at high elevations, and another, using assisted loading, of 120 mm, 4.7 in. The new design seemed so much better than developments of the older 3-inch that work on the 3-inch T9 was cancelled in 1938, just as it became production ready. By 1940, the second development of the 90 mm design, the T2, was standardized as the 90mm M1, while its larger cousin became the 120mm M1. A few hundred M1s were completed when several improvements were added to produce the 90mm M1A1, which entered production in late 1940, and was accepted as the standard on May 22, 1941. The M1A1 included an improved mount and spring rammer on the breech, with the result that firing rates went up to 20 rounds per minute. Several thousand were available when the U.S. entered the war, and the M1A1 was their standard anti-aircraft gun for the rest of the conflict. Production rates continued to improve, topping out in the low thousands per month. Like the German 88 and the British QF 3.7-inch AA gun, the M1A1 found itself facing tanks in combat, but unlike the others it could not be depressed to fire against them. On September 11, 1942, the Army issued specifications for a new mount to allow it to be used in this role, which resulted in the 90mm M2, introducing yet another new mount that could be depressed to 10 degrees below the horizontal and featured a new electrically assisted rammer. It became the standard weapon from May 13, 1943. Anti-Aircraft Operation In anti-aircraft use the guns were normally operated in groups of four, controlled by the M7 or M9 director or kerosen predictors. Radar direction was common, starting with the SCR-268 in 1941, which was not accurate enough to directly lay the guns, but provided accurate ranging throughout the engagement. For nighttime use, a searchlight was slaved to the radar with a beam width set so that the target would be somewhere in the beam when it was turned on, at which point the engagement continued as in the day. In 1944, the system was upgraded with the addition of the SCR-584 microwave radar, which was accurate to about 0.06 degrees, 1 mil, and also provided automatic tracking. With the SCR-584, direction and range information was sent directly to the Bell Labs M3 gun data computer, an M9 director, which could direct and lay the guns automatically, 
all the crews had to do was load the guns. Main Anti-Tank Developments The M3 was also adapted as the main gun for various armored vehicles, starting with the experimental T7 which was accepted as the 90mm M3. The test firing of the M3 took place on an M10 tank destroyer in early 1943. The M3 gun was used on the M36 tank destroyer, and the T26, later, M26, Pershing tank. The M3 fired an M82 APC shot with a muzzle velocity of 2,650 feet s, 810 m s. However, both the muzzle velocity of the standard M3 gun and the quality of the steel used in the M82 APC, armor piercing capped, shot, while comparable to the 8.8 .8 cm KWK 36L 56 mounted on the Tiger I were inferior to the Tiger II's KWK 43L-71 8.8 cm main gun firing its standard APC, armor-piercing capped ballistic cap, shot used by German forces, with the result that the former's penetration fell far short of the standard projectile fired by the German tank. As a result, US ordnance provided some T26-M26 tank crews with the 90mm HVAP, high-velocity, armor-piercing, Tungsten penetrator subcaliber projectile with a muzzle velocity of 3,350 feet s, 1,020 m s, or the T33 AP with a reheat treated projectile with ballistic windshield and a muzzle velocity of 2,800 feet s, 850 m s. The HVAP could compete with the KWK 43's penetration performance when firing standard APC but tungsten ammunition was always in short supply, and the T-33 which only just made it in service a month before the end of the war still fell far short of the KWK 43's performance. Performance An unsuccessful anti-tank variant was the T-8 gun on the T-5 carriage. The gun was an M1 with the recoil mechanism from the M2A1 105mm howitzer. Eventually a version of the T8 with the T20E1 gun and T15 carriage was tested, this led to the 105mm anti-tank gun T8. Because the standard 15 and a half foot long M3 90mm main tank gun proved incapable of penetrating the heaviest frontal armor of the heaviest German tanks such as the Tiger II tanks and their seldom seen Jagutdager tank destroyer variant, a number of improved versions of the M3 were developed including the T-14 which included a standard muzzle brake and the T-15 series. The 90mm T-15E1L-73, with its 21 feet, 6.4m, long barrel, was designed and developed as an AT gun that could match or surpass the performance of the 8.8 cm KWK-43L-71 cannon, the famous long 88 on the Tiger II. High Velocity 90mm Gun T-15 Performance the T15 90mm L-73 anti-tank gun utilized many types of armor-piercing ammunition. T43 APBC, a solid shot, it was a modified T33 for use by the T15. It had a muzzle velocity of 3,200 feet s, 980 m s, and therefore increased penetration capabilities. It could punch through 4 in, 100 mm of armor angled at 60 degree, from vertical, up to about 1,300 feet, 400 m. T41 APC, modified M82 projectile of the M3 cannon, fired at a much higher velocity of 3,200 feet s, than the normal 2,670 feet s. It could defeat up to 8.5 in, 220 mm, of vertical armor at 30 feet, 9.1 m. T44 HVAP, modified M304, T30 E16, for use out of the T15. Muzzle velocity of 3750 feet s, 1140 m s. Maximum penetration of 15 in, 380 mm, of vertical armor at 30 feet. T50 APC, an MA2 projectile with increased nose hardness and overall better design. Same muzzle velocity 3,750 feet s, but increased penetration, equal to the KWK 439.19.3 in, 231-236 mm, 
against vertical armor at point-blank range. Two versions of the T-15 were made. The T-15E1 and the T-15E2 which both used separate loading ammunition. By mid-March 1945, a T-26E1 pilot was equipped with the 90mm T-15E1 and was sent to Europe in a so-called trial by combat. It was given to the 3rd Armor Division where it was enhanced with additional armor plates. It was able to fire its gun in anger on only one occasion on April 4, 1945, where it engaged and destroyed a German armored vehicle, probably a Tiger Eye or Panther, at a range of 4,500 feet, 1,400 m, during the fighting along the Weser River. According to memoirs of John P. Irwin, it knocked out a Tiger in Dessau as well as a Panzer IV and a Panther. This claim is questionable by historians and unsupported due to lack of solid evidence up to this day. Near the end of World War II, more experimental versions of the 90mm gun were tested including the even higher velocity T-18 and T-19 main guns. The T-19 was a T-18 modified in an attempt to reduce barrel wear. Other versions included the T-21, which was intended for wheeled vehicles, and the T-22 which used the breech from the standard 105mm M2 howitzer. The T21 and T22 were designed to use larger powder charges. None of these versions entered service. In the post-World War II era, development of the T15 continued, now redesignated the T54, which included the ability to fire 90mm HVAP APCRT projectiles at a muzzle velocity of 3,750 feet s 1140 m s The T-54 served as the main gun main armament of the M26E1 Pershing, M47 and M48 Patton tanks used in the Korea War, as well as the M56 Scorpion anti-tank vehicle. Coast Artillery During World War II the Coast Artillery Corps adopted the 90mm M1 to supplement or replace aging 3-inch guns in harbor defense commands in CONUS and U.S. territories. The guns were organized in anti-motor torpedo boat, AMTB, batteries, typically with four 90mm guns and two 37mm or 40mm AA guns each. Typically two of the 90mm guns were on T3-M3 fixed mounts and two were on towed M1A1 mounts, with the 37mm or 40mm weapons on single towed mounts. The T3-M3 mount was designed for anti-surface or anti-aircraft fire. Some of the Seacoast 90mm guns were the M2 version. Emplacements for at least 90 batteries of two fixed guns each, plus mobile weapons, were constructed in Conus, Panama, Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and elsewhere in 1943. Variants M1 Towed anti-aircraft gun Approved for service in 1940 Fixed on T3-M3 mount for coastal artillery service M1A1 Towed anti-aircraft gun Production began in 1940. It featured the M8A1 spring rammer. Its rate of fire was 20 rounds per minute. M2 A complete redesign to make the gun dual role, functioning as an anti-tank gun as well as an anti-aircraft gun. The ammunition feed was upgraded and an automatic fuse setter slash rammer, the M20, was added. This enabled the rate of fire to reach up to 24 rounds per minute. Elevation was improved with the gun able to depress to 10 degrees. To protect the crew, a large metal shield was added. The M2 was the standard weapon by May 13, 1943. From the march it could fire from its wheels in 3 minutes, and from a fully emplaced position in 7 minutes. In 1944 the weapon was enhanced with the addition of proximity fused shells. M3. A tank-slash-anti-tank version of the gun. It was used to equip the M36 tank destroyer and the M26 Pershing tank. It is also known as the 90mm L-53. M3A1. M3 gun with muzzle brake, used on M46 Patton tanks. M3 ammunition. M71He, 23.29 pounds, 10.56 kilograms. Projectile. M77AP, 23.40 pounds, 10.61 kilograms, projectile. M82APC, 
24.11 pounds, 10.94 kilograms, projectile. Surviving examples. 1 AAA at Fort Irwin NTC, California, Post Museum. 1, possibly M1, Travis AFB, Fairfield, California, near the entrance to the Skeet Range. 1 AAA at CFB Borden, Ontario, Canada. 1 AAA at Sangudo, Alberta, Canada. 1 AAA at Wicakama, Nova Scotia, Canada. 1 AAA at CFB Shiloh, Manitoba, Canada, RCA Museum. 1 AAA at Shiloh, Manitoba, Canada, Private Collector. 1 AAA at Lemberg, Saskatchewan, Canada, Private Collector. 1 AAA at Colwood, British Columbia, Canada, Fort Rod Hill. 1 at Savannah, Georgia, National Guard Fairgrounds. 1 at Arundel, Quebec, Canada, Legion Hall. 1 AAA at Salt Ste Marie, Ontario, Canada. 1 AAA M2 at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, U.S. Army Air Defense Artillery Museum. 1 AAA M1A1 at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, U.S. Army Air Defense Artillery Museum. 1 AAA M2A2 at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, U.S. Army Air Defense Artillery Museum. 1 AAA M1A1 at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, 31st Ada Brigade. 1 AAA at Brodalbin, New York. 1 AAA at Roswell, New Mexico. 1 AAA at Greenville, South Carolina. 1 AAA at Anderson, South Carolina, VFW Post. 1 AAA at Deming, New Mexico, Deming Luna Mimbris Museum. 1 AAA at St. Marie du Mont, Manche, France, Utah Beach D-Day Museum. This gun belonged to the 116th AAA Gun Battalion and was lost in the Channel June 6, 1944. The gun was recovered by locals after the war. 1 AAA M1A3, built 1954, at Raton, New Mexico. 1 AAA M1A1 at Halifax, Nova Scotia, Royal Artillery Park. 1 AAA M1A1 at Fort Bliss, Texas, Fort Bliss Museum. 1 AAA M1A1 at Linthicum, Maryland, National Electronics Museum. 2 Anti-Tank T8 at Fort Benning, Georgia, National Armor and Cavalry Museum. 1 M1A3 at Reedsville, Georgia, National Guard Armory. 1 M1A3 at Campinas, Sao Paulo, Brazil, located at an open museum which belongs to the 1-1 Brigade of the Brazilian Army. 1 Seacoast M1. Number 6931 Chevrolet, on Barbette, carriage model T3, at Battery Parrot, Fort Monroe, Virginia. 1 Seacoast M1 on Barbette, carriage model T3, shield scrapped, Erexon Air Station, formerly Shemya AFB, Shemya, Alaska, outside Building 600. 1 Seacoast on Barbette, carriage model T3, at San Pedro, California. Fort MacArthur Military Museum, the museum has several barrels and was restoring at least one weapon as of October 2014. 2 AAA M1A1 at Moscow, Russia, Museum of the Great Patriotic War, supplied as Lend-Lease during World War II. 190 mm m 2 a one at Tucson, Arizona, Pima Air and Space Museum. 1 M1A3 at Historical Military Museum of Cartagena, Spain. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.